Okay, peritonitis. It's inflammation or infection of the peritoneum. Now, if you think of um, the best way I can describe the peritoneum is if you were to blow up a really huge balloon and you were to take all your internal organs and set them in the balloon and then put a little bit of fluid around them, that area is the peritoneum. It's the area in between the sac that holds everything and the fluid that's in there. So the peritoneum is what lines everything. So what happens is this gets all inflamed. Um, causes can be due to a ruptured appendix, a perforated peptic ulcer, and I've only seen maybe one or two of those since I've been a nurse. Um, a lot of times it's usually your appendix or diverticulitis. Um, it says also pancreatitis can cause it too. Um, this condition is very serious and it is life-threatening. Um, you, it's not one of those conditions that you ignore and if you're the nurse taking care of any of these patients, you need to be alert for it. Um, it, it can cause sepsis and we all know that with sepsis, they can go into shock and if they go into shock, the heart rate goes where, Caden? Nope, heart rate goes up and blood pressure goes down. Yep. So we got to watch them for signs of shock too, okay. Signs and symptoms of peritonitis is abdominal pain, um, abdominal rigidity, and that literally means that the abdomen is rigid to touch, and they also guard it. And what you mean by guarding is, um, without thinking, a lot of times they'll be holding their abdomen, but if you go to touch it, they'll try to keep you away from it. And it's not that they're being resistant to the assessment, it's just that they're in so much pain. Um, nausea, vomiting, and fever is huge. Um, the folks that they've taken to surgery, a lot of times they'll actually see, um, like it depends upon what's perforated. If it's like a diverticulum that has perforated, if it's a diverticulum that has perforated, um, you might see residual of seeds, food, um, whatever that person may have eaten and has made its way to the colon, you'll see that floating around in the peritoneal fluid. So it all depends upon where it's at. Um, diagnostic test. Um, what WBCs, they're going to have an elevated white cell count and abdominal x-ray or CT scan and they do definitely will require surgery. Again, MPO, fluid electrolyte replacement, NG tube. Um, and if you want to know what an orogastric tube is, that is when the patient is not a candidate for an NG tube and we have to go down the mouth and into the stomach, that's an orogastric tube. Um, antibiotics, surgery, and pain management. Pain management is a big one because after they've had a surgery like this, they're not going to want to breathe deep for you. And so if they're in pain, especially because it hurts, and if they don't breathe deep, they'll develop atelectasis. I ain't asking you what that is, Kate. And we know that atelectasis is a big complication after surgery. And what happens, just to remind you, is where the alveola get material like mucus in them, they get thick and the alveoli stick together. And when that happens, um, they can set them up for pneumonia. Um, complications, intestinal obstruction, hypovolemia, the fluid shifts into the peritoneal cavity due to inflammation. Again, sepsis and shock. Diverticulitis. Um, diverticulitis um, is well, there's three different terms you need to be familiar with, and they are all different. Um, diverticulum is the outpouching of uh, bowel mucous membrane. Diverticulosis is just multiple, it's just the plural term. And diverticulitis is inflammation and infection of the diverticulum. You can have diverticulum and diverticulosis without diverticulitis, but you cannot have diverticulitis without diverticulosis or diverticulum but make sure you're familiar with those terms. Just because a patient has diverticulosis, is not a, it's not anything that we have to treat. They're not going to the hospital. And actually they've proven that um, a lot of folks over age 60 usually have developed diverticulum. This is just showing you <coughs> pictures of the, outpou the outpouching in the colon or the diverticuli causes chronic constipation causes them because the mucosa is stretched and um, decrease of dietary fiber low fiber high animal fat diet so you guys while you're off on this quarantine and you've been munching down on your morning bacon just remember you're putting yourself at risk for diverticulosis later on in life 
obesity well we won't stop there for any length of time sedentary lifestyle um I, you guys do or do not have a sedentary lifestyle so you don't have to worry about that one question what's what sedentary lifestyle? so what's sedentary sedentary is your quiet lifestyle you don't do anything you just kind of like i'm gonna say <laughs> smoking puts you at a big risk sorry guys that's what it says and certain medications will put you at big risk for it. Those medications being one that cause like constipation, which are your narcotics. Signs and symptoms. <coughs> there are no symptoms for diverticuli or diverticulo, diverticuli, uh, diverticulum. There is no um, symptoms. I mean, you can't tell just by looking at somebody that they have them, nor can they tell that they have them. Um, it's just that if they at first, there's no symptoms of it. Uh, sometimes they'll have constipation or diarrhea, cramping. Sometimes if they're bad enough, they'll have bleeding and abdominal tenderness. Um, that is more with diverticulitis. Um, diagnostic text, test, flexible sigmoid, uh, colonoscopy, CT, can, CT scans will show them. Now, the causes of, um, again, we went over them, aging, constipation, obesity, um, low fiber diet, um, animal uh, diet, high in fat, and people greater than 60. And these folks have the pain. Where, Katen? Where, Katen? Where is oh, this? Your left lower quadrant. Okay. Therapeutic interventions. Uh, mild, if it's just a mild case, say maybe somebody ate too many strawberries. Tylenol, they might put them on antibiotics and a liquid diet. If it's severe, and I have seen severe cases of diverticulitis, pain control, MPO, IV antibiotics, IV fluids, and surgery, they will actually go in and remove that part of, a, of the colon that's causing the problem, and they may have a colostomy for a short period of time. Um, I told you guys a story about my friend who was a nurse um, that I worked with on 3 South. She was in her 30s. Um, came in unable to void. They cast her, told her she had a UTI, sent her home. She came back, couldn't void. They cast her again, sent her home. Finally, on the third time, um, she was real insistent something else was wrong with her. And when they did a CT scan, she had a ruptured diverticulum. She had developed peritonitis. She went downhill really quick, went into full blown ARDS, and she ended up dying in her 30s over a ruptured diverticuli. So they are very, very dangerous. And so you need to do a lot of education with your um, patients. My friend did not know she had them at all. She had no clue until this episode. So you need to do a lot of good education with your patients if they do have diverticulite. Diverticula. Okay, go on. Keep going. Okay, how am I doing on time? You got two minutes. Okay. All right, Crohn's disease. Um, it's an autoimmune, and what's autoimmune? <clears throat> Your body attacks itself. Good job, body attacks <clears throat> itself. This one can involve any part of the intestine, small or large. Um, it usually affects the terminal ileum, though, or the first part of the large intestine. So again, it's called Crohn's disease, autoimmune. It can involve any part of the intestine, and that's important to remember because that will help you establish the difference between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Um, Crohn's disease, again, uh, usually is at the terminal ileum or the first part of the large intestine. You have remissions and exacerbations. Um, again, exacerbations meaning periods where it gets worse. Um, the cause is unknown, but they do think hereditary has a link. Um, ages um, are at most risk are between ages 15 to 30. Women greater than men, and again, smoking seems to play a part. And we're going to pause for another minute. 